Let's skedaddle out of here. You ate my freaking pepperoni sandwich. Look at me go, finally posting a 24 hour readathon vlog. I'm excited for this. Hello, book reading friends. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Mel, and today I bring you another 24 hour readathon. Today I read for 24 hours straight, yet again. And just a little spoiler alert I did manage to read a total of four books during this time period, plus a book that I kind of DNF'd. So we'll get all into those as we go along. And I am just incredibly excited because I have been itching to bring you guys another video featuring a 24 hour readathon. So it's finally here and we'll get into the TBR, into all of the books that I read all in a minute. But before we even start with the video, I honestly need to give a massive thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Now, as you guys know, I am a jewelry junkie. I am always wearing my necklaces, my rings, my hoops. I am all about the jewelry. I am all about accessorizing. And you guys are also constantly asking me, Mel, where did you get your earrings? Mel, where did you get your necklace? And so I am genuinely incredibly thankful that I have partnered with Ana Luisa in today's video because they are a luxury, affordable jewelry brand that not only brings you incredible pieces, beautiful pieces for as inexpensive as $39, but also they care about the environment and they have an incredible mission as a brand. So first things first, we all know that jewelry can get quite expensive very quickly. And what I personally love about Ana Luisa is the fact that they do have those luxury pieces. They do have the best quality in regards to jewelry. Everything is made with care, with the best materials. But the pieces start around $39, which is so nice because you can splurge and you can get more items for your money, meaning that you can build your own jewelry collection with these stunning pieces. Ana Luisa is also so carbon neutral and I absolutely love this about the brand. I love what they do and their approach to sustainable fashion because they have managed to offset 100% of their carbon emission. And that is done all the way from starting with their raw materials all the way to the disposal of said pieces. They were also incredibly kind and they sent three pieces my way and I love every single one of them. Starting with the necklace, it is a crescent moon with a little star and you guys know I love anything to do with the moons and the stars I will literally buy and get anything that has a freaking crescent moon with turtlenecks in particular it is so freaking hard to get the necklace to be at a length where it looks good and it doesn't look like snatched up in the actual shirt and this one definitely has the perfect length to go in a turtleneck and for the hoops these are the Tia medium gold and you guys know if you watch my videos I am a hoop type of girl granted Ana Luisa has a bunch of different hoop designs from small ones to medium ones to large ones, even statement pieces for your ears. But I personally chose these ones because I wanted just a clean, pair of hoops that weren't too thin but that also weren't too thick and for the ring that I chose I chose the mecca of white I love that this one in particular is readjustable so no matter your finger size you can wear this one and adjust it in a way that it fits your finger perfectly so if you do want to check Ana Luisa out I will leave my link down below so you can go directly to their website and check out all of their pieces because they literally have something for everyone no matter what your budget is and you can also use the code MELREADS10 to get 10% percent of your order and yeah thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video and let's get right into the TBR for this 24 hour period all right everyone so in regards to what my reading plans are for this 24 hour readathon I do have to admit it is almost a month later so I will make a quick rundown from the books that I highlighted in this video that I planned on reading that I either DNF'd or continued or that I particularly had my eye on so Let's get right into them. We all know that Chain of Iron came out in March, and so the first book that I really want to read in this 24 hour readathon is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is the first installment in the Last Hour series, and in this one, we follow the Carstairs and the Blackthorns as they arrive to London, and they accidentally bring a plague alongside them that starts taking down Shadow Hunters. Now, this book does take place after the Infernal Devices, meaning that after that, there is zero to none demonic activity in London, and once these people are 
arrive, that demonic activity also starts picking up. You guys know I always have to throw in my graphic novel pick for the 24-hour readathon, and my pick is Monstrous Volume 1. Now, this is a very steampunk, very gory graphic novel, and in this one, we follow Micah Halfwolf, who is a teenage survivor of a cataclysmic war between humans and the Arcanics. And in the face of horrible danger, Micah finds herself being hunted and being the hunter. And while she seeks out the answers to her past and exactly what has happened to her and why she's gotten to this point, there is a monster living inside her and that, in and out of itself, is illegal. I'm also adding a contemporary in here and that is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. And this one is said to be a very dynamic Twitter war, a Twitter feud between these two teenagers that are a part of their family businesses. Both of their families own restaurants and in particular the conflict starts once Pepper's family steals the sandwich, the grilled cheese recipe from Jack's family and they find themselves feuding online and bringing this crime to everyone's attention and while they are feuding online they are falling in love in person. I am also adding a thriller in here. This is a YA thriller, The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And in this one, we follow Avery. Once she finds out that she has inherited the entire estate from a billionaire, the only catch is that she has never met this person, she doesn't know who this person is, and she has even less of an idea of why she has inherited everything that he owns. And in order to claim her inheritance, she actually needs to go to Hawthorne Mansion, where his family lives to claim everything that he has left behind for her, except that once she gets there, she will encounter all of his grandsons that were definitely expecting some sort of high cut from this inheritance and also a bunch of riddles and games that she needs to solve in order to get what is rightfully, or so it seems, hers. You guys are definitely staring at me as if I'm crazy, like, Mel, you're gonna read so many books in a 24-hour period. I have done it before, and I trust that I can do it again, so I am adding another one, and that is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Now, in this world, we primarily follow clairvoyance, but the art of clairvoyancy is illegal, and we in particular follow Kate Mahoney, who is a clairvoyant herself, and she finds herself working in the underground of Cyan London. However, she finds herself kidnapped one day, in the middle of the night and taken to the secret world, the secret society called Oxford. And she finds herself in this situation being trained by one of the people inside that society called Warden. I have also heard fantastic things about The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I know this is a lot of people's favorites, so I can't wait to go into this one. And so this right here is my TBR for the next 24 hours. So let's get into it. Let's get into the reading vlog as I give you guys updates, as I've vlog for the entirety of 24 hours, let you know all of my thoughts as I go, and then we'll get into the wrap-up portion for the video. Happy readathon day! I am so freaking excited to start this 24-hour readathon. It is currently 7.32 p.m., so it's a little bit later than I would have liked to start this vlog, but I had to hop on my sprints, and I had to give the 30-minute intro, read all the comments, and now we are on the first sprint. We're three minutes into it, and I am going to start with my first book, and it is Monstrous by Marjorie Liu. I have been waiting to read this graphic novel for such a long time, and now I can finally read it during this readathon. It's meant to be like a steampunk type of graphic novel and we follow a world where I believe there was some sort of disease and the main character now holds a monster inside of her and that is illegal so she is meant to be navigating this world where she kind of has this being inside of her so I can't wait to read this and see what it's all about I barely know anything about it which is very unusual because if you guys know me I love to know every single bit of synopses before going into something so I'm excited to dive into this one first I want to feel really accomplished just to kick things off and then after that I'm a hop on to chain of gold so first book of the readathon let's get into it All right, 
right, so I just finished Monstrous. We are on another sprint right now. This sprint has been a little bit more stressful just because of the Discord. It's like super hard to keep a track of everything and everyone. Oh, there's a bug. But I finished Monstrous and it was really, really good. I think my latest thought is between a 4 and a 4.5. I think the world building was really interesting. It has one of my favorite elements, which is like old gods and deities. That's one of my favorite things to read about. The illustrations were also stunning. The world building itself, learning about the Arcanics and the old gods, which is like a prominent part in the story. Arcanics are like half breeds. They are like half human, half beasts, I guess you could call them. And then we have talking animals, which was also really cool. And then we have humans and we have obviously the old gods. And the main character in particular is somebody who has a monster inside of her that her mother kind of got implanted into her, but she doesn't really know what the monster is and we don't really find out until later on that it is an old god which old god we don't really know and there's a fight scene where one of the characters says like the old one and i'm like could she have like the oldest god inside her could she be like it has a name like the like the empress something that's meant to be like this really powerful like deity figure so my bet is like maybe the main character could be that but it was very very interesting it was very gory a lot of like body horror as well and like nudity and like trigger warnings for like abuse and stuff but i love the cat character in monstrous the cat was really cute and also little fox i freaking love them i definitely need to get the rest of the monstrous graphic novels so that i can read those but i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed my first read so first book down now we're on to this bad boy chain of gold i'm excited for my reread and finally tap this book because i got it last year for my birthday and i read it for the first time as an ebook so it's time to dive back into the shadow hunter world So, update. I am currently like 200 or so pages into Chain of Gold. It don't be hitting the same as a reread. I really don't think Cassie Clear's books are meant to be reread, especially to catch up for a new book. What she plans out with her plot, nothing is foreshadowed and what is foreshadowed is so easy to crack into. So there's not really any Easter eggs that I am picking up as a reread. So I don't really, at this point in time, 200 pages in, I don't really see the purpose of rereading. Like I have caught a thing or two that I am writing down my theories for when I actually do my Chain of Iron reading vlog. But beside that, everything else is pretty much the same of what I just read. So like, it's it's not even hitting the same. I loved it the first time around. I gave it like four stars, 4.5 maybe. Like, I feel the rating dropping for me just because I am not enjoying it as much. Things that I can tell you, I'm hella mad at Grace. Lucy reads super young to me. James is just a fool. Like, the only characters that I truly really Really love are Charlotte which is not even like on the book yet she's just mentioned and then we have Cordelia which I personally love and then Matthew which I adore with my entire being but beside that everything's the same I'm not really catching anything is there really a purpose to this reread I don't know this is just me ranting about the book so I'm putting it down for now and I am picking up the inheritance games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes in the hopes that this will pick up for me that this will be quick that I will enjoy this so I'm gonna crack into this one and that's what we're doing right now because if not i know i'm gonna be reading chain of gold for the longest time and i'm not gonna make any progress I'm gonna pick this one up and then we'll see at what point of the day i actually end up picking chain of gold back up It's literally 3.46 a.m. I need to take a nap, people. I also 
read 100 pages of the inheritance games it's really interesting so far i just think the whole premise of like a billionaire leaving 40 something billion dollars to a virtual stranger is wild to me so i definitely need to see how this progresses maybe she'll be in a relationship with one of the grandsons we shall see everything in here is like a riddle like a puzzle so i'm ready for her to figure it out eventually this is a weird angle anyway 20 30 let's make it 30 minutes i shall be back in 30 minutes. <laughs> I'm up, people. It's time to get to reading. I am going back into the inheritance games. I am ready to do so. It's also, I slept for more than I intended to. I slept for an hour. Uh, so it's 4.46. So that's what we're doing. Back to reading. Okay, so quick update before I go take off my makeup because it's that time of day where I start feeling like a little little cardboard. But um, I woke up, I read about 20 pages of the Inheritance Games, and I feel like the inspo for this, it's already been mentioned in the book too, is most definitely those spammy emails of like, oh dear, you've won 10 million dollars, please contact me immediately. And I feel like that's the most clever thing I have ever heard, like the fact that somebody would think of writing a book based on that premise to me is fantastic. Like, I think it's a genius idea. I have no idea what could happen in this book beside maybe it's kind of been said that all four Hawthorne kids, like grandsons, have the same mom, but they all have a different dad. So I'm like, okay, so maybe this girl could also be like a granddaughter, but then that completely rules out the possibility of a romance with one of the grandsons, which I feel is gonna happen particularly with Jameson, which is the person that she's interacting with the most. There's also been a lot of riddles. She literally inherited so much freaking money. She now has a lawyer and a bodyguard and now she attends an entirely different school but I think Avery as a main character she definitely was only striving and aiming for what was achievable for her and her financial situation so now with this scenario that she has so much money she is definitely willing to go like the extra mile she definitely is thinking a lot more into her future and what she wants to do so i think her possibilities now are a lot broader than they were before and i like that for avery because avery is smart we've seen her be smart in this book so i think so far those are all of the updates that i have oh wait her sister telling her ex-boyfriend everything made me mad. There was absolutely no reason to call up your ex-boyfriend and tell him that your sister just inherited 40 billion dollars. Like, for what? He's your ex-boyfriend. Like, let's skedaddle out of here. I feel like having an energy drink because I'm snoozing, even though I just woke up and technically slept. Okay, so I just finished the inheritance games. I believe I'm rating this a three star. I gotta, like, sit on it for a little bit, but I think it definitely read more mystery than it did thriller it wasn't as thrilling as i thought it would be so i think the twist at the end was really good but i think everything else kind of fell flat for me i was expecting more to happen throughout the book and i feel like not much really happened up until like the very end of the book so i will go into detail when i have you know my wrap up portion at the end of the vlog but right now a little bit let down but i am very much intrigued to read the second book i feel this is going to be one of those cases where the second book is going to be better than the first one so I really am genuinely interested to read the second one. I believe the premise had so much potential to be so much more thrilling, so much more exciting that it kind of just, the grooming part of it with Avery and trying to like teach her the ways of like, you know, like the hair and like the clothing and like the outfits and train her on what to say. Although all of that was interesting, it took such a big role in the book that it kind of again felt a little bit repetitive and like uninteresting to me. So I definitely feel like the book could have been like 300 pages long instead of 370 and it still would have been great i think the strongest part of this book was definitely the last 100 pages but those first 200 there was a lot in there that i was just like what's the purpose for this i also kind of hate this about ya sometimes the way that plot twists are dropped just for the sake of shock value instead of this was foreshadowed and then this happened. I feel like it happened once or twice in this book that I was just again not vibing with. So now I need to pick up my next book and I have no idea what it is. I am kind of thinking that it could be like a romance. I feel, I feel I'm not quite ready to like dive into fantasy yet. So I might pick up something lighthearted, maybe tweet cute. I've been pondering over reading that book for a while. 
Maybe Tweet Cute could be a good one. And after, I'll just jump into the bone season, maybe. Hmm. So I need to figure out what I'm reading next. You can see that the sun's coming up because of this big blob of light right here. But I need to figure out what I'm reading next. So here's Tweet Cute. That's definitely an option for me um for something more like lighthearted. i don't feel like reading a sci-fi right now so maybe the bone season could be another one what i'm gonna do i think is that i'm gonna put up a poll on my ig stories and let you guys choose what i should read next so either like a ya contemporary romance or a fantasy not a really big gamble it's not really a fair fight but these are the two books that i'm feeling right now so let's put up that poll on ig okay so we are putting up the story what should i read next okay so that's the story that we're putting up let me put it up right now and let's see what the people say. I'm gonna give it up until 7 a.m. So I'm gonna give it around like eight minutes to see what the people vote for. And then I'll choose what I read. In the meantime, I have some dishes that I still need to do from the early AMs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all those dishes. And then again, in about eight minutes, I'll check back with the IG stories and we'll see what the people chose for me and that's what I'll go for. Okay, so it's super tied right now. It's like 52% tweet cute and then 48% the bow and season. So at this point in time, I am picking up Tweet Cute, that was a really ugly angle. Why was I like this? I'm picking up Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. So this is gonna be my next read in the readathon. And we'll see how I vibe with it because if I'm not vibing with it, then I'm just gonna switch to, to freaking, what's it called? Bone season. That's what I'm doing. Here we go. If this book is not cute, I'm freaking suing someone, okay? It better freaking deliver. If it's named Tweet Cute, I expect it to be cute. officially 100 pages into Tweet Cute. And I am loving this. Like, the banter between the characters, the relationship between the characters, and also just the Twitter feud is so freaking incredible. I also love that the main character, Pepper, she's not doing it because she finds it fun, but rather because her mom is asking her. So there's kind of the argument there of like, she didn't make you do anything, but she's the one telling you to do something. And then Jack is definitely like the class clown, and he definitely cares for Pepper, like you can see how he transitions from like this place of indifference towards liking her and she is kind of the same way. So they were kind of progressing real life in their personal lives and they were about to go on a date and everything and suddenly he sees the freaking tweet on her phone and he's like, your family's stealing from me. That's my grandma's legacy. Step the F out. I was like, oh god, shit's about to go down. I am ready for the rest of the book. I feel like I'm truly gonna fly through this read. Five star feels right now, I will say it. We shall see if it comes to fruition, but I am loving it. And I also love all of the different elements that there is to this story because not only are they kind of falling in real life and then they fell out in real life, they are also feuding online. And then on the side on this app called Weasel, they are actually talking back and forth with like an alias and they've been going back and forth kind of like very flirty. So there is just a lot of different elements going into this that are so interesting and I love the element of texting in books. I freaking love that so much and this book has all of that. Just 10 out of 10 and then also there's like a lot of mention of like food, the sandwiches, like the desserts. So I'm just having a great time with Tweet Cute and I definitely want to finish this before 10 a.m. It is currently 8.16 so I definitely want to make myself some breakfast. I'll probably make myself something simple, probably like a little sandwich or something. And then I'll keep on reading while I eat my breakfast. I probably will also make the sandwich cold, which I rarely do, but I feel like doing it today. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the kitchen, make myself some breakfast, and then keep on reading because this is good, y'all. Like I'll definitely finish this in like another two hours. You guys, I 
am perplexed. You remember if you were on that live stream that one story about how a piece of ham and cheese disappeared off my plate and I got super spooked? Well, it's confirmed that it was Nala because I literally, TMI though, I went to the bathroom and I left half my sandwich on this table. Tell me why that's the only thing left. Look at her. Are you pleased, ma'am? Are you freaking pleased? You ate my freaking pepperoni sandwich. And then the freaking thingy is on the floor. I guess that's what having dogs does to you. They eat your freaking food. But also, I am now 100 pages out from finishing Tweet Cute. And it is really cute. Like, I think the dynamic is a lot more different than what I expected it to be. They are definitely aware that it's each other in this feud and they have made agreements behind the scenes for this feud. So they know exactly what's going down, when it's going down, and it's just like them trying to outrun and win against each other, which is the cutest thing. And while that is happening, they sometimes like bond very unintentionally because they really do have this connection. So I freaking love the characters. I think I'm liking Jack's chapters a lot more than Pepper's. I feel like his internal struggle is a little bit more enticing to me in a way and the way that his chapters are written are just, I, I love it. It's beautiful sometimes. Times. So I definitely love his chapters. I definitely love Pepper's chapters too, but the conflicts with their families are very much different But this book is so good. Like don't sleep on it. So freaking cute. Not us always freaking doing this Like Christine and I are matching and then Kristen and Jaleesa are matching. We always do this unintentionally. Only us. Only the inner circle. Okay, not everyone just going <laughs> Look at uh, And Jaleesa is just staring <laughs> everyone so a little bit of an update i have since finished tweet cute i gave it a four out of five stars it was a really cute story and i love how the romance was like not the most prominent thing but rather these two individuals kind of working out their inner conflicts their conflicts with their family and kind of just having this fun twitter feud going on that was kind of messier than fun but also fun at the same time i definitely think it was a fantastic choice for a 24-hour readathon however i am now going to jump into the bone season i know a lot of people say to read the novella the pale dreamer before do i really want to read a novella i'm not a novella reader you guys i can never bring myself to read novellas so i think i'm gonna dive straight into the book and see if i'm you know understanding it getting it if i'm vibing with it and if there's anything that i particularly find confusing i'll just refer back to the novella because i do have that on script but otherwise i'm gonna jump straight into it as is everyone hello same shirt same outfit same everything it is a month later after i've actually finished this 24 hour readathon or almost a month later so i started the 24 hour readathon reading a graphic novel i wanted something quick i wanted something that would make me feel very accomplished very quickly and it certainly did it was a nice start to the readathon i ended up giving monstrous a 4.5 out of 5 stars i think the world building in this one was very very interesting we have talking animals and we have humans and we have half breeds and we also have old gods and the graphic novel was very gory it was definitely very steampunk as you can see all of the illustrations are kind of on the darker side you know that sets the tone for the story but i think what resonates the most with this one is you guys know one of my favorite things deities and gods it was a very big part of the story i think in particular micah as a main character she still has a lot to embrace and she still has a lot to find out because she has a monster inside her there is a lot of kind of self loathing Thing that comes with it. There is a lot of uncertainty that comes with it. There is a lot of unanswered questions for her due to that monster being inside her. And so Micah definitely has a big journey to embark on to find out exactly what is inside her, exactly what it means for her, and exactly what she is going to do when she has those answers and kind of what role she plays in this world that is clearly shunning the fact that she has a monster inside her. And the plot twists here were absolutely great. I kept turning those pages. The illustrations were also gorgeous. Now knowing what we know about Micah's monster, what exactly that entails and what exactly that is gonna 
produce later on in the story for her and for the people surrounding her. I also loved Little Fox. Little Fox was definitely one of the highlights in this graphic novel. Then it got a little bit rough for me because I started Chain of Gold and I actually only got exactly 200 pages in. I still have the bookmark in there and I ended up softly DNFing Chain of Gold. Now, I am currently reading Chain of Iron as we speak, so I really should have finished this. I really honestly should have finished Chain of Gold because there are details towards the end that I know are not fresh in my mind. I know there are details that I barely remember and I honestly wish I would have pulled through and finished this throughout the 24-hour readathon. But I will say something interesting. As you guys know or if you don't know, I have tried rereading Cassandra Clare's books before. I have never been able to pull through an entire reread. I only get a certain amount of pages in and then I kind of give up. And so with this one, I kind of came at a standstill in realization of there is nothing like experiencing a Shadowhunter book for the first time, but I don't know if these books are meant to be reread, especially because I typically have a very nice first experience with these books. So I ended up softly DNFing this because I felt myself getting slower at reading. And I was like, no, we need a change of pace. I need to switch this around and I need to actually read something that excites me. And that unfortunately at that point in time was not this book. Then I read The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And now this one was an interesting one because this is kind of pitched as a thriller, not a thriller not at all. Don't be fooled. This is more so a mystery and thrillers and mysteries have very different beats in the story. This was definitely Knives Out vibes. I will give it that. It definitely did fall under that category but I found myself constantly waiting for something exciting to happen in the story. Once Avery finds out that she inherited all of this money, all of this estate, all of these assets from this billionaire, she kind of goes into this grooming period of them trying to teach her how to talk in public how to do press, how to dress, how to do her makeup. They give her a makeover. And yes, all of those things might have been necessary in the press's eyes but honestly it was just draggy for me i don't think i found anything particularly interesting about this book up until the very last i'd say 100 pages 150 pages that's when the story really started kicking in that's when the development really started happening and that's when we started seeing kind of every single one of the grandsons have their own little game to play their own little mission left behind by their grandfather to play to execute and the plot twist that I was guessing was going to happen ended up happening so it was kind of predictable at times and so that's why I couldn't find myself giving this book any more than a three star and it was still an enjoyable journey don't get me wrong it was a very fast read however I wish it would have had more thrilling elements I wish it would have had some of those classic thriller beats because the whole mystery aspect of it was not interesting enough for me to be as immersed in the story as I could have been I will say though something that I did mention in the vlog I love the fact that because Avery didn't grow up that well off she she kind of had limited options for herself, both in her studies and in life and in career. I love the fact that once she inherits this money, she kind of gets more options and she starts exploring things that she never really thought about before because it was outside of her capability. However, it does kind of establish the conversation of if you don't have money, then you can't do X, Y, Z. And I think that part of it is not necessarily the greatest message. And so even though I love the fact that in the end, she broadened her horizons, I think that message there with money and power, and again, that acquisitional part of it. It was not necessarily the greatest message to give in this book because even though some people may not be that well off, there are still opportunities that you can make out of yourself and that you can chase after. Again, there were certain elements to this book that I didn't particularly enjoy and then there were other things that were really interesting. So we started off great on the 24-hour readathon and then we kind of DNF'd and then we kind of had a book that wasn't really that good and then I needed something to pick it back up and so I went for Tweet Cute by Emma Lord expecting a very cute story story, about a Twitter feud, about food, about a possible romance in the horizon, and oh boy did I get all of that and so much more. This was definitely the highlight of the 24-hour readathon. I loved every second of this book. I think the dynamic between Pepper and Jack was so freaking great, and I love the fact that it wasn't as simple as the synopsis leads you to believe. There are a lot of different elements going into this, like parental expectations and going to college and figuring out what you want to do, whether it's something that you 
you particularly want to pursue or if you want to go down the path of what your parents expect out of you with education. And we also get a lot of complicated familial dynamics in this one with sisterhood and parenthood in general about divorce and parents being together and how that impacts teenagers because they are sometimes in the midst of all of that turmoil. That element of the book was something that I wasn't necessarily expecting because I thought it was just going to be the main two characters in their feud, in their own world, in their own thing. So that element thrown in there was something that I definitely really enjoyed. And I also love the fact that both of these characters are kind of doing that feud kind of reluctantly. And then they kind of move to a point where they come to an agreement of this is what we're doing and we're going to do it because we want to and we want to see what comes out of it and their relationship as well is so much more complicated like they are kind of friends in real life and they are kind of flirting under some aliases in a particular social media and then they are feuding on twitter and then they are kind of falling in love in real life but not falling in love in real life and thinking that there are other people under their aliases so there are just so many elements to this book that were so enjoyable there is also the exchange of obviously tweets and texts and calls and all all of that mixed media elements are something that I personally find myself enjoying when I read books. So Tweet Cute was a definite win, it was definitely cute, and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. And last but not least, I ended up reading The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Now The Bone Season is actually a book that surprised me, but not in the way that you'd think. I kind of expected this book to be well-rounded, I expected this book to be very balanced with world building and the characters, and to also have have, you know, that sprinkling of romance. And although it did have all of those elements, I found that the world building definitely won in this story. The world building definitely took the biggest chunk of the story. Guys, all of my tabs are like yellow and green. That means world building or shocking moments. So you can tell just based on that alone, that world building is definitely a big part of the first book. This definitely sets up what's going to follow in the rest of the series. And so because of that reason, because it was so heavy in that world building, because I was just itching for something else. I was just kind of bored at times. I couldn't get past it, if I'm being honest. But that being said, the characters were interesting. I think Paige was definitely a very strong character. She is not a quitter. She constantly wants to help the people that she loves. She wants to help herself and she wants to find answers to these questions that are so mysterious in this world. And then Warden, as the love interest, as the male lead in this book, was also somebody that I thoroughly enjoyed. There chemistry it was top tier there is one scene when they first kiss that i was just like oh my god samantha shannon okay i see you and that was definitely a level of chemistry that i wasn't necessarily expecting with the bone season but something that i was thoroughly thoroughly surprised by and i will continue with the rest of the series i am very much intrigued to see where the story goes and it also took me by surprise to know that in this world clairvoyance by the people of oxford they are taken as slaves that was something that i was not expecting in the this book and that was something that I was like huh interesting so again this book surprised me but in ways that I wasn't necessarily expecting and I honestly sucked at giving you guys updates with this book because I was so sleepy by the end of the 24 hour readathon I started reading it and at the end I was just like snooze fest that I wasn't even vlogging anything. I just did some b-roll and I called it a day. So again, very enjoyable book. Can't wait to see where this goes. But at the end, I rated it a 3.5 because I feel this could have been more well balanced than it ended up being. And so these are all of the books that I ended up reading in this 24 hour period. Actually, we need to make the math. Where's my phone? We need to make the math on how many pages I read because that's something that I always forget doing. In the end, I managed to read exactly 1,600 pages, which honestly, for a 24-hour readathon, pretty good. It's pretty nice. I actually thought I had read less pages than 1,600, and it's pretty on par with what I read last time, so I'm definitely proud of myself for reading 1,600 pages. We shall see how we do in the March 24-hour readathon, because I am out for blood. I am out to redeem myself. And yeah, you guys, those are all of the books that I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this 24-hour readathon vlog. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you participated, what books you read, or if you are participating in our 24-hour readathon in March. Also, let me know it is happening on March 
26th starting at 7 p.m. EST. I am excited for all of you to participate this time around. Let me know if you are or if you have read any of these books. Also let me know down below and if you reach the end of the video let's leave down below some clock emojis because we did read for 24 hours straight. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already. I am constantly uploading videos that I am sure you don't want to miss as well as live streaming throughout the week doing my weekly rating sprint and you can also follow me on all of my social medias which are always linked down below as well as my Patreon. Again, thank you so much to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. My link to Ana Luisa is at the top of the description and remember to use the code MELREADS10 for 10% off on their website on your order. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring today's video and for making this happen. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much and I shall see you on the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>